it's actually here. Whoa, was that one of those things? A mask with eyes, mouth, and some kind of war paint. A mask with eyes, mouth, and some kind of war paint. Even more passages. Really does seem to be more extensive than I first thought. There's a mask hanging on the wall here as well. The obligatory mask. Looks different from the other rocks. What is it? A lump of resin, it's supposed to burn like tinder. Are the Asambosum fans of masquerade balls? It's like some kind of graphic novel. The story begins with a man choosing children from a large group. They follow him into a cave, and the door closes after them. The children continue to live there while the man teaches them to fight. The man also gives them food, and so the children gradually grow into men. But what is that? The children seem to change on the way. Their arms become longer, and they get great big fangs like predatory animals. Pretty gruesome. Looks like one of those weird lamps they sell in the Scandinavian furnishing store around the corner back home. I feel like it's there for a reason. Best leave it alone for now. Out of order. The Obligatory Mask. It's secured by chains to the cave roof. I feel like it's there for a reason. The poor children. If I only knew how they were changed, they'd make the story of the century. Perhaps the professor knows the answer. If he's still alive. Not the slightest trace of Prof Hartman. Only more passages that lead deeper into the caves. Are the Asambosum fans of masquerade balls? Poor children. If I only knew how they were changed, they'd make the story of the century. Perhaps the professor knows the answer. 
Here's some more of the resin. Are the Asambosum fans of masquerade balls? I feel like it's there for a reason. Let's fuel this lamp and see what happens. The resin's burning. The poor children. If I only knew how they were changed, they'd make the story of the century. Perhaps the professor knows the answer if he's still alive. I feel like it's there for a reason. Let's fuel this lamp and see what happens. Poor children. If I only knew how they were changed, they'd make the story of the century. Perhaps the professor knows the answer, if he's still alive. Was that an animal? Or a human? Or... Are the Asambosum fans of mass... Looks different from the other rocks. What is it? Let's fuel this lamp and see what happens. What is with all these masks?
Let's fuel this lamp and see what happens. The poor children. Perhaps the professor knows the answer. The door won't open. It's the end of the line. This mechanism with the five stone wheels would appear to open the door in this room. The symbols on the stone wheels look familiar. Let's fuel this lamp and see what happens. today. I wouldn't like to make myself any more obvious to the Asambosum. I don't think the ritual protects me from being eaten alive. <laughs> Things are getting tight here. The battery 
is almost empty. Herr Professor! Professor Hartman, can you hear me? <sighs> He's obviously in some considerable pain. I'm not going to be able to move him until those wounds are patched up and he's feeling better. Healthy he's not. Completely unresponsive. I ought to take a look at his wounds and give him something for the pain before we get moving. Here. Get these down, you prof. That should keep the blood off my clothes, and, broadly speaking, inside him. At least until I get him out of here. That will have to do until we get back to the mission. Looks like Sister Sam has done a good job. Don't worry, Professor. I'll get us out of here. Hey, Professor. You look considerably less shit than you did when I found you two days ago. Welcome back to the land of the living. Thank you for the uh, expressive compliment. The sisters have looked after us quite devotedly. And of course, my deepest thanks to you for your getting me out of there, Miss... Um... Peters. Sam Peters. Ah, and you are the journalist. Please forgive me for setting off without you. But the situation left me with no other choice. Forgiven and forgotten. If you give me the story as promised. Of course. So you have a few minutes for me then? Take a long look at me. Do I look like I've got anything else planned? I'm just not entirely sure that I'll be able to give you all of the answers. Let's find out. You want to know what the Asan Bosom are? Spill it, Prof. They are humans, I'm sure of that. Did you see the wall paintings in the caves? Yeah. The Ashanti were always a very secretive people with an extraordinary bond with nature. As with all native peoples, their living space also forms the basis for their existence. They naturally defend it with every means at their disposal. At some point, the Ashanti shaman must have realized that they would not be able to defend their lands indefinitely from outsiders. They therefore trained up some quite exceptional warriors. The ritual that's shown in the cave paintings. Correct. But those things don't appear to be human in any way. What happened? Well, it happens that there is a particular species of snail, which is incidentally the reason we were here at Lake Bosomtui in the first place. Whose genome has changed through eating the algae brought here by the meteorite. Yes, exactly. The algae may have been carrying a virus, which, over a relatively short period of time, triggers a rapid genetic mutation in a species. There are supporting cases. On the Indonesian island of Flores, they found the fossilized remains of a very small but adult human who was a genetic successor to Homo erectus. All evidence suggests this subspecies of dwarves evolved in only a few generations as a result of their isolated environment and in response to the narrow, low-ceilinged cave systems of the region. An unbelievable evolutionary step. Relative to conventional evolution, this process really did take place at the speed of light. As with the Asambosum? Possibly. Perhaps, as with the snail and the algae, the virus is the explanatory factor across all these examples. How far does this go? Perhaps the shaman knew that the algae possessed some form of mutational capability and raised his warriors on it. The terrifying result you've witnessed firsthand. Then these warriors are designed with the sole purpose of keeping outsiders like us away. That is my interpretation, yes. And what about this disease they carry? That, alas, is one of the questions I cannot currently answer. The Asen Bosom themselves appear to be immune to it. Perhaps it's a further defense mechanism. Do you think that they killed anyone? No, at least not directly. 
The evidence so far suggests they were designed to keep potential aggressors at bay, not to actively eliminate them. So what now? As snail research goes, Professor, this story is more sensational than most. That may well be the case. But? The shaman and the Ashanti have only been acting in the best interests of their people and in perceived self-defense. And that justifies their turning children into monsters? We don't have to approve morally. But does morality apply in the case of survival? Doesn't every nation do reprehensible things every day in the name of survival? Clearly, we are not the first Westerners to come here. And I doubt the intentions of all such visitors are as benign as our own. In this special case, I have to ask myself, even as a scientist, is knowing the answers more important than doing the right thing? Answers are what we're paid for. Then I hope never to see the day that we run out of questions. Do what you think is right. So, I have to make a decision. Should I go ahead and publish the story?